Are, are you both uh, in agreement on the Community Reinvestment Act? That, that, it, that it was government run amok sticking its, its nose in business it shouldn't be? I, I, th go ahead, I, I, I don't necessarily feel that um, getting people in stable uh, housing is outside the realm of the government function. I think when there's a need for something like that, it's within government power to work in ways to fulfill that. However, I don't think home ownership in the um, in the um, you know, some prime mortgages, adjustable rate mortgages, things like that that have high default rates are necessarily part of, should be part of stable housing. I think you can solve that without. Do you agree um, that the government encouraged that behavior? It encouraged I, th I think with that act it did, yes. And Certainly they did because, the, you know, the banks are not altruistic, as we all agree. They would have, if they could have made money doing it, they would have done it. And so they didn't do it because they knew there was a high default rate. And then, you know, with this whole situation that was set up with Goldman Sachs and AIG, that was all the government, 100% the government. Now, Goldman Sachs and AIG all had their hands out, that's for sure. But they couldn't have done it if the government hadn't been complicit. Let, let's take a second to check in to see what Sarah has to say. She's following what people are saying about this on social media. Thanks, Mark. Um, we've got a lot of people saying uh, that because both sides agree on TARP, it's time to move on to another topic. Um, we've got a comment on Sarah's glasses, so they're a big hit. Um, also, um, people are saying that they hope that both sides find that they have more in common with each other than they had previously thought. Um, one thing that continues to come up. Uh, one thing that continues to come up that kind of goes along with TARP is uh, the national debt and the crisis that we have there. Um, people are wanting to know what both sides think are some solutions uh, to addressing that problem. Okay, what of it? Rick, you want to start? Be, yeah, be, be, before we move on to that, one, one thing with regards, again, to the whole TARP issue. We all agree that to provide $700 billion plus dollars of our money to the very actors who created this nightmare is, is completely wrong. The area of disagreement is that the institution that did this, was it the banks that did this? No, they didn't write the checks themselves. It was government. And so we had this incident occur, TARP, the, the entire uh, bailout of the bankers that caused these problems. Yep. And then the question is, how do we respond to it? And I think one of the biggest differences between Occupy and Tea Party is that as we look at it, we see that the institution that embezzled our money from us and gave it to these criminal bankers should have less power, less trust. Rick, how many, we should put less authority. How many authority fraudulent in loans did the government write? Pardon me. How many fraudulent loans did the government write? They, the uh, federal government, in, in terms of the uh, uh, actual uh, loans themselves. The fraudulent loans, the robo signing, the indiscriminate gambling of other people's money. That was not the doing of the government. That was right? big business. The government neglected to do its job in restricting their behaviors. Right. But at the end of the day. The businesses and the banks and the brokerage firms are the ones who actually did what they did. All the federal government did was fail to stop them. Well, is, no, no there's, 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 a, there's a corollary to that. If, if we go all the way back, if you think, who's at the end of this? I mean, when, when the music stops playing, somebody's not going to have a chair. Who is it? Somebody goes out and gives a loan to a person who has no business getting a loan. Maybe there's robo-signatures, what have you. They then give it to the bank, who then sends it to Wall Street, who packages it up and securitizes it and sells it off. Who buys it? Fishing villages in Norway, uh, corporations, retirement, uh, pension fat plans. Why do they buy it? Because it's got a AAA rating. Really? You mean all these deadbeats who are, who are living in homes who are never going to pay, that is a AAA rating? You bet. Why? Because it's backed by two GSEs, two, two uh, government entity uh, corporations, Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac, because they knew <laughs> at, at the end of the day that when this thing blows, and it was going to blow, they're going to get every single penny of their money back because it's going to be paid by taxpayers. And, and I, I think we get your point on that, Rick. Before we leave this topic, you, you used uh, very interesting language. Uh, you called these executives, uh, Goldman Sachs and AIG and, and the like, uh, criminal bankers. Did the executives yes. who overinvested in these mortgage-backed securities get off too easy? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, at least, during, at least during the savings and loan crisis, people went to jail. I mean, so far as I know, no one's been prosecuted except for Bernie Madoff. And that's just because, you know, 
he ripped off rich people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you could though. not invest with Bernie Madoff unless you were a certified investor. And what that means is you have to have at least a million dollars to invest. Ordinary people could not invest in, in Bernie Madoff, but when ordinary people got ripped off, they could not get their money back. So what, what should happen? Right? Bernie Madoff. What, what should happen to these, to these CEOs, to Dick Fold and the rest? Throw them in jail? I mean, I don't care what happens to them. I just won't, don't want them running my economy. Tea Party, do you, do well, you the, agree? The people who, uh, who gave them the money, the people who allowed that to happen, they need to go to prison. They should have just let the bankers fail. They should have let them fail. One thing I, I thought you might not know this is kind of interesting. They're the same people. Though. Little factoid is the that the board of the Federal Reserve is the same as the board well, of those banks that they're bailing out. Well, unfortunately, a lot of you know almost most of the Treasury comes from Goldman Sachs. Unfortunately, so you're right about that. But to answer one of the questions that you raised earlier is who in the government wrote mortgages? One of the things that I found really interesting in researching this is that prior to the Community Modernization Act, or the, I'm sorry, the Community Reinvestment Act, where they wanted to promote mortgages, there was this uh, pattern of behavior that was called redlining. So the banks would take these districts and they would redline them and say you can't loan there because these people are too risky. And you know who was involved in that or who set up this redline system? FHA. It wasn't the private banks, but it was FHA that did that. And so, let, yeah, there was uh, quite a bit of government that did What you're probably going to hear a lot tonight is the fact that, you know, uh, you know one side maybe uh, blames big business and, and the other side maybe blames big government. But I think what, what happens when they're the same? What happens when we're dealing with a revolving door that employs the same people? That's exactly what we have to do is take the power away from them. Because big business, you're right, if they're given the opportunity, because as I said before, they're not altruistic. They want to make money. And given the opportunity, they will do it in any way they can. You take the power away from them by letting the government cannot do anything for them. Isn't they have to operate on their own. Isn't though, to try to discern motive here? I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, if I am running a company, yes, my main job right. is, is to provide a service, but in order to provide a service to people, that business has to yes, stay money. profitable. Right. I, I, and do you really think that's that why any it's of these the job of the government. Out, to, out, out to ruin people's lives? And that's why it's the job of the government to regulate these industries, because we know what the banks are going to do. They're going to make as much money as they possibly can in any way that they possibly can and get away with it. They're going to do it as far as they can go within the law, and they're going to go a little bit farther and pay some fines. But whatever the government allows them to do to make money, they're going to do. And that's why the responsibility rests with the government not with business to uh, rein in what they're doing and regulate um, financial markets and make sure that this doesn't happen again. Did the, did the Obama administration's uh, new financial reform regulations go far enough in your opinion? No, no. No, they you won't mean, be effective. You mean Frank Dudd? Yeah. <laughs> right, Dodd Frank, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, let, let's hear from the Tea Party on this. Is regulation a problem in this area? Was, was it lax regulation? that helped lead to the financial crisis? That, that, that's, that's, that's part of it. Incentives drive behavior. And in this case, something we haven't discussed is moral hazard. They knew mm -hmm. they'd get bailed out. They knew that money was going to come. So year after year, they were able to report these huge bonuses and give them to themselves, knowing that as they built up this house of cards, when it finally ruptured, they were going to make private the profits and make public the debt. They were going to shift that to the taxpayer. So as far as how best to handle this, again, Freddie Mae and Fannie Mae have been a catastrophe. I mean, when you look at it in, in the context of causing this. So the answer is, instead of more government, less government, as far as the regulations go, the, the two things that everybody demanded from this was one, and too big to fail. Bust these big banking cartels in New York City that are controlling our entire country, bust them up. They have 10 times more power than all of the other corporations combined. Uh, because if you look at who owns the media, they get that financing from those big banks. So they have that incredible microphone. Bust those monster banks up. That's number one. Number two is if you're going to go wild and do all these derivative things and these, these highly leveraged risky type that of things. That most people can't understand, by mm -hmm. the way, who aren't in that business. Right. Do not also do that with FDIC back money. Do not sit there and run these hedge funds and private equity and these highly leveraged entities. Make sure that if a bank is a commercial bank, they're a commercial bank, and if they're a Wall Street brokerage firm, they're a Wall Street brokerage firm. Right. Well, did it bother anybody that the Treasury Secretary who was orchestrating all of this, uh, Hank Paulson, was the former CEO mm -hmm. of Goldman Sachs mm -hmm. right before he took the job? Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's think, not even close to unique. I think that's what, what you're getting into here is um, it's being framed as if, like Bob said, that there's two different entities to bail, but like you just stated, it's the same one. They're, they're you know, encouraging these practices or allowing these practices. Um, the very same people are, who are supposed to be um, the watchdogs here um, 
are, are you know, they're making money off of it, encouraging these practices, and if we continue to frame the argument as whether or not we should be blaming corporations or capitalism or um, the government, we're still not really focusing on solutions and holding people accountable. So I think once the That's conversation can get to a more unified thing is that we need to have more regulation of banks so that they can't pull this stuff off, and we need to hold the bankers who put us in the position accountable that would which means what? Yeah, well, it goes to Rick's point. Who's, you know, we want to bust all these trusts, right? I mean, Teddy Roosevelt was the big trust buster. He was in government. I mean, who's going to bust these big institutions? And that's the problem we're dealing with. And I think it's up to the people to finally rise up and take these institutions down, or well, at least... I think we can start by stop writing them two and a half trillion dollar checks. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. And then that's part of the problem. The government has overstepped its bounds. Sure. And even to force a bank to loan money out to somebody who has no way to be able to pay it back, forced to do so by the government, that's overstepping their regulations. We need less government, not more government. Right. We need less regulation, not more regulation. Well, the, the reason to...